Wow. Wow. Uh, to think uh, where we were three and a half years ago and Kathy Beauregard and uh, her and our meeting so many times and, and Dr. Dunn. And I don't think he got kicked out of any football games. I think he was okay, but uh, I'm sure he wasn't very happy with us. But Kathy Beauregard having those late nights in, in my office with me. And uh, she wasn't a boss, and she's never been a boss. She's been a friend. And I remember sitting there telling me after, during and after year one, this is why we hired you. This is why we hired you. This is why we, we hired your culture. And for a woman to have the vision she had, this has really nothing to do with me. It has something to do with her. She's the one that pulled the trigger on this culture. To go from 1-11 and 11 to 12-0, and 0, I don't even know how many teams have ever done that in a three-year span. No idea. I'd like to know. Uh, what those players accomplished tonight is historical. Um, you had Corey Dev Davis side an all-time FBS uh, record in, in, in receiving yards. I mean, the greatest wide receiver of all time in the history of college football statistically is right here in little old Kalamazoo, Michigan. He's not little, though. We had a single season attendance record of 143,000 people. Um, I know that might not sound a lot to Ann Arbor, but that's a lot to us. And I think it showed on the Friday after Thanksgiving, raining, cold, sellout crowd. I think it just showed where this program's come when everybody could just watch it on TV. And I think it just shows the connection between a community and a football program and how powerful sports are and what sports can do for a culture and a community and to rally them behind one another, whether you face tragedy with shootings, whether you find it, face it with bicycle accidents, whether you face it with divorce or loss of a child or your son or daughter's in Bronson Children's Hospital, if you just keep your oar in the water and you believe in something greater than yourself, that's what can happen. 12-0, and 0, perfect regular season for the first time in program history. Is that correct? Jarvion Franklin set a rushing TD record, the Western Michigan rushing tech TD record with 41. I can go on and on. I mean, it's over 60 nevers already. And last year we started, we ended it at 29, and you all said, now what you got, coach? Bet you can't do it again. And uh, I didn't do anything. Players did it. We said, we're going to grow higher. Now you got over 60 nevers in one year. That's amazing. Got to give Toledo a lot of credit. I told you it was a spitting image of each other. And when you look at the final statistics, they were. I think we're 11 yards off in total offense. They had wideouts catch touchdowns, so did we. Uh, they had a rusher for 200, so did we. They had a quarterback throw for 200 and some, so did we. They're identical. I think what came through tonight was our how, but you got to give Toledo a lot of credit. Jason Candle's one of the best young offensive minds in the country and a really phenomenal football coach. And uh, the one thing I loved about today was if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And uh, a 9-2 and team versus an 11-0 and team, we've never run from challenges. We've had them all year, but I know this, um, with, with all the adversity and all the expectation and pressure we've had, those kids haven't flinched one bit. They average win by their average margin of victories over 20 some points. I don't care what conference you're in, that's hard to do. So people can label us, put a number on us, we won't. We're going to define ourselves by how we play and we're going to continue to do that. Everybody else can talk about our program, say what's missing, say all those things, what conference we're in. We're proud to be in the Mid-American Conference. And I wouldn't know how to have it any other way. It's an elite program, elite school, 12-0. There's only two that are undefeated right now, and it's pretty hard to go undefeated. Ask anybody that has, that has a loss how hard it is. And um, this team's deserving for everything they get. And if other people don't necessarily think that, I really don't care. I care about this football team and what we believe. Nobody, We haven't let anybody put labels on us and tell us where we belong ever, and we're never going to stop doing that. And uh, definitely not going to start now. We'll define ourselves by how we play. So I'm uh, very proud of this football team, very proud of this community. I want to thank Kalamazoo and all of Western Michigan for showing up. I just want to make sure everybody understands how important that is. The Friday after Thanksgiving when you're on break, the student section is completely packed and they stay the entire game and rush the field. That's the vision. That was the vision three and a half years ago, right there. And you go 12-0. and 0, And everybody thought we were crazy. So uh, we're not that crazy there, boss lady. We're a little out there, but we're not that crazy. So... Uh, not crazy is, is the quote I think Jim Harbaugh used earlier. Well, people that think you're crazy, what do you say? Not crazy. So I guess that fits here too, boss lady. With that, I'll open up for questions. Yeah, you got to give our defense a lot of credit, Coach Pinkham, Coach Duggan, Coach Williams. Um, you know, it's funny, after the game, Coach Pinkham and I are sitting there, and we're both kind of looking at each other like, man, that 21 points at the end just kind of 
kind of hurts you a little bit. At the end of the day, you're 12-0, and 0, and, but that's our type of who we are. We want to change our best. We want to grow higher. We don't let the circumstance dictate our behavior. Just because we're up, we don't want anybody to score. Um, and we adapted our defense in the fourth quarter, and you know they took advantage of it. Give them credit. But the first play of the game set the tone for the defense out the gate. Defense wins championships. And the defense came through big. They got us four. They got the offense four possessions, right, with elite field position. That's outstanding. They played their hearts out. wasn't perfect. They played their hearts out. Defense wins championships, and Ed Pinkham deserves all the credit. Outstanding performance, and I hope he's celebrating tonight because he deserves it. It doesn't surprise you at all. You're just like, it's Jamari. That's what, exactly what I told John Creek. He gave me the statistics, and I said, there's Jamari being Jamari again. But he was fresh. Could have played him last week, but he was still a little banged up. And look, we had every disadvantage thrown at us. Call it what you want. That's why I said our players never flinched. At the end of the year, you give one team nine days or ten days break for a championship, and you give one five. I don't necessarily understand that. But at the end of the day, you know, you don't give Auburn – Five and Alabama ten. You don't give Ohio State ten, right? And Michigan five. But at the end of the day, you got to take what's dealt, right, wrong, or indifferent. You got to take it. And with that short week, we had to practice different than we ever practiced. We didn't practice with any pads the entire week. That's hard for a head coach. But we had to get our players fast and fresh, including Jamari, and get him ready to be able to do what he did tonight. And um, I think that's just understanding your players, knowing your players. Handling all the, the, the cards that are dealt you and not sitting there complaining about your cards. Use them to your advantage. And that's what we did. We practiced differently. We met differently. Uh, we focused differently. And uh, still roll the boat. Still our culture. We just had to do it in a different way because of the circumstances we were dealt. And we weren't going to let the circumstance dictate our behavior in any, in any way, shape, or form, no matter what was thrown at us, a short week or not. I think it just shows the power of this coaching staff and what they can do. You notice that too, Nick, huh? Uh, it was very powerful. And I think the entire crowd cheering, row the boat, uh, all in unison. I think it just shows how far this culture has come. Uh, and it shows that if you believe in something bigger than yourself, yeah, you might get made fun of, you might get laughed at. People might sit there and, and snicker, drill holes in your boat, but they can drill all they want at 12-0. and 0. They, they can drill all they want. And uh, they can say what they want about our program. One thing I know about this program, it's real, and we never have to defend it. We've done that for ourselves. We've, we've played the way we need to play with every bit of adversity, every trap game, every this, every that, every this, every that, every what about this, yeah, but, yeah, but. Look, we're not going to let circumstance dictate our behavior. And Fergie Rowan, you know, he's got a son. And uh, that will forever stay in my mind because that's a kid that had to row when he got here. He didn't do all the things right, and he had to grow up. He had to mature. And it's amazing that the definition of maturity here is when doing what you have to do becomes doing what you want to do. There's no perfect example of maturity than Justin Ferguson rowing as he gets carted off the field and how far that young man's come. Forget the football. As, 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 as a future husband, as a dad now, as a person, that's what this program's here for, to serve and give. Twelve wins will never define this program or this culture, ever, ever. The type of people, the power of the people – will define us. And we have incredible character all over the place. Not perfect, but very real. Very real. It was very, it was very, uh, very emotional, I'll be honest with you. Um, very spiritual, to be honest with you. And, uh, it was one of those moments to give you goosebumps. And I haven't got boost, goosebumps very often. And uh, I got them then. Well, uh, his ankle, uh, and it was it was this way, and uh, you could see it, and our entire team saw it. So the first thing I do is get everybody away. I don't exactly have the strongest stomach, so I couldn't sit there and focus on it. But all I did was look him in his eyes, hold his hand, and just tell him how much he meant to me and how much he's meant to this culture. Uh, and really to be able to use the culture moving forward, yeah, football might be done for you. So what? Think of all the things you've learned in this culture. You're not going to remember one game. You're going to remember everything you've learned in 15, 20 years when you come back for a game, we're all together, if I'm still alive, 
we come back together, you're going to remember all the experiences you had, how you changed as a man, how you grew higher, all the relationships you formed in our community, how you serve and gave, and the changes you made. Not that play. You're not going to remember that play. He gave everything he had, every second to this program, and there's no regrets. The pain of discipline versus the pain of regret. He'll never have any regrets in his life. And I was just giving him perspective about him being a father. Uh, the way he responds to this is going to show his son how to respond to things in the future. And um, it was a wonderful teaching moment, I thought, and uh, kept us both off, off what was going on. I'm very proud of him. This is a wristband from year two, and it's, it isn't supposed to be white. It's not. It's dirty. That's how long I've had it on my wrist. But it says WTF, and that stood for worst to first. And uh, if you dream it and you vision it, if you have the right people and you have the right culture and you have the right process, it'll happen. Eventually it'll happen. hard thing about college football is you don't have much time to do things these days. And uh, Kathy Beauregard and Dr. Dunn gave us the required time to do it. And uh, you look back to that, I'm so thankful for 1-11. It'll probably be the most memorable year ever in my mind because failing is growth, and we failed more than anybody in the country. But our perspective of failing was way different, and we wouldn't let each other be down. And those who had stayed, we promise you, you would be a champion. Now, we're not a full MAC champion yet, but we're a MAC West champion. Those who stay, the 1-11 guys, they all get to leave here a champion. A MAC champion, plus a bowl champion from last year. They get to leave as champions. Um, and I'm just glad I didn't lie to them. And uh, it just shows the power of the culture, power of people. Let's talk a little bit about the I know Kevin Young was telling us after the play, Kevin got real soft in the ball. After he was. Came back. You, you saw it. He was. And he's so low to the ground. He's so strong. And it's a rivalry type game, right? So when you have that, everybody lifts up their performance. You know, they had a 200 yard back, so do we. Um, but one thing about him is he's a phenomenal human being, first and foremost. And he's a phenomenal running back. He's low to the ground. He's got incredible vision, sets up his blocks well, breaks tackles. I think that's the best thing he's always done. It seems like Kareem Hunt's been here just as long as Zach Terrell. And they really have. He's one of those special running backs. And, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just glad we don't have to play him anymore, to be honest with you, because he is tough and he deserves a lot of credit and everything that comes his way and hopefully a, a next level shot. On the ball, a lot of emphasis. But we emphasize the ball all the time. It's part of the process. Sometimes you're going it, it, to – It's there's no magic. We didn't do anything necessarily that different with the ball last week. It was just – we fumbled it. We let it go. Um, we learned from our past to create our future. We didn't ignore it. We did more this week. We did a little bit extra. We emphasized it way more than we have, and we emphasize it. Um, but when you look at it, that was the name of the game. And somebody asked me before the game, what do you think the key things are? I said, the ball. And look what happened. How many turnovers? They have two turnovers? I think it was two. Two to zero. Is that correct? Name of the game. Came down to three possessions at the end, 55-35, three touchdowns. Two possessions, one in the football game. So when you start to looking at the direct correlation to winning, the ball is a program. We're number one in the country in turnover margin, and we're 12-0. and 0. When we were 1-11, and 11, we were last in the country in turnover margin. And I said that, the ball, that's why the ball is the program. Kirk Shiraka taught me that. I mean, our offensive coordinator taught me that as a young coach. The ball's are program, PJ. Whatever you know doesn't matter if the ball's not the program. And you know what? You're, you're right. And you look at it, and that's why it's all over. That's why you come to our practice. We do ball disruption, ball security all the time. That's the biggest way we've turned it around. That's the biggest way Washington turned it around. The direct correlation doesn't have to do with Seattle's close to Kalamazoo. It has to do with the ball. And when you take care of the ball, you'll win a lot of games. If you don't take care of the ball, you'll lose a lot of games. Look up the stat. It's amazing. It's like 80% true around the nation. It's unbelievable. And we're going to make sure that we put our players in a position to be successful. People have called our offense simple, easy, not much. When you outscore your opponent by 20-some points, on average, you know that, that's pretty good offense. We take care of the ball, and the defense finds a way to get back. Coach, you talked about the, uh, the moments where you get to celebrate your win with your team. Um, I glanced up at the monitor and saw some uh, uh, video of you uh, pogoing with your team in the, uh, in the locker room there a little bit. Having the Mac West championship now, I know you've 
Uh, that's exactly what it was. You, you experience it, you feel it. That's why you play the game, for moments like that. But the hardest thing is, as a head coach, that moment's over, you know. And as I stand here today, I'm already on to, okay, what do we have to get better? How can I push our staff to be better tomorrow? How can we give our players the best advantage for next week? Because we play a very, very tough football team in Ohio University. Um, but those are the moments you, you coach for. You know, as hard as this profession is, as tough as this profession is, as draining as this profession is at times, and the amount of pressure and expectation we put upon ourselves as coaches and players, that's where the release comes from. You know, so it's 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 80 some hours of pressure, and about 45 seconds worth of celebration. Um, but I want our players to enjoy it, and then we're going to move on because that's what this program does. Uh, we celebrate when we celebrate, and we put our oar back in the water, find the front of the boat, point it to the next direction. Everybody gets your oars, put them in. Let's embrace our past. You create our future and row. And then we go somewhere else. Coach, I noticed that uh, in between uh, the third and the fourth quarter, um, you kept up pretty well with Gary Rich in the sprint down the sideline. But <laughs> These guys I also are... noticed that between the first and the second, you didn't keep up with Corey as well. Yeah. Uh, could you talk about that? Oh. I don't know. I'm getting older. I think I turned 36 in a few days. He definitely, you know, there's a lot of fact. He's got Coach Nichols, speed coach. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have access to all those things, you know. I have every excuse known to man. Um, but uh, if I have, if I, there were years ago that I could beat the players down the field, and that was a problem. <laughs> and now I'm very glad you said I can't beat them because if I can beat them still, Corey, we, 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 we're not fast enough. We've gotten faster this football team. I'm glad I can't beat them down the field. But that's one thing we've always done, and um, that's just part of our culture. And I want players to understand we're going to be different, we're going to be us, but we don't try to be that. It's just us. You know, I want to make sure they know their head coach is right in there with them. And I'm not just one of those guys, fold your hands and watch. I'm going to be very involved with you and make sure that I hold you accountable for every single play upholding the culture, including in between quarters. Yeah, I think if you look back three years ago, I think any culture or any, any coaching change is very difficult, um, especially when you have a drastic culture change and things didn't go necessarily that well prior. It's, it's just part of football. It's hard. And then you have this energetic young guy come in with no experience and put down this vision. And, um, you know, that's just different. Not better than the last one, just different. And, um, and then you have a bunch of guys who don't believe in it. It's okay. And then you got a guy, a bunch of guys who do believe in it. And that's a very difficult transition when you go through that. And it's not even difficult for us. It is. But it's way more difficult for players. And to look at the guys like Michael Henry and, Car and Carrington Thompson and, and, and Taylor Moten and Zach Terrell, um, there's not many left. Um, but, you know, those who stay will be champions. And, um, you know, even Zach had no idea what row the boat was and why are we rowing a boat and what do we have to do with that. And there's a lot of gut checks. There's a lot of uh, man checks, we call them, to see what you really want in your life. This program is not easy. It's very, very difficult. And every day you have to change your best because everybody wants change until you get it. Um, and everybody wants that happy change. They don't want to put the work in to do it. But when you've got to put that work in and you've got to sacrifice, our team wouldn't allow us to lose tonight because of all the things they've sacrificed, all the things they've put in leading up to this. It was, it was worth too much to them. They were going to find a way, and they were led by the seniors. This is the first year, with all due respect, we've had incredible senior leadership across the board, putting themselves aside for everybody else. Starts with Corey Davis. Could have left. Could have left to make millions of dollars. He'd already be in the NFL. Stayed. When it wasn't maybe popular to stay. Eight and five, won our first bowl game. Perfect. Right off into the sunset. No thanks. He came back, and he's getting all the individual accolades. That's not why he came back. He came back to get his degree and to be here for his football team and lead him to a championship, and he did that. And you talk about a vision from a youngster with millions of dollars on the table, and you say, you know what? I'm going to hold off on that for experience, for moments, for memories. Whew. That's powerful. That's powerful. When that outweighs the result. Pretty cool. Uh, 
I, I, I'm going to say it because it's the biggest lesson I've ever learned. Um, never sacrifice what you really want down the road for what you want right now. That's the hardest thing for a head coach, especially in 2016, when the pressures, the expectations, the winning, the winning, the winning, the winning, the winning. That's all people want to hear about. To stay true to your process and to believe in a process, not just a result, it's the greatest lesson I've ever learned. And um, these players, I knew it before, but these players made it very real. Made it very real. And never let the circumstance dictate your behavior. And that's something we hold our hat on. And I sound like a broken record, and people think I have all these slayings and slogans. Go back to year one and listen to the press conference. They're the exact same they are now. But we just know them a lot more, and they're part of our DNA now. They're not just sayings and quotes. They actually are our DNA and what we're made of. That's all about becoming a man is when you can become that and truly be real to that, special. I know this. I know we beat Toledo, and uh, we're 1-0 in the Toledo season, and now we're looking to go 1-0 in the Ohio season. Nothing has changed. We're staying to our process. We got to get better. There's a lot of things we could have got better at from, from yesterday to today and today till tomorrow. And that's all we're going to focus on.